Hi everybody. Um, I'm making this short video to show you how to use Stata to estimate a regression model, to uh, then create predicted values, and also how to use margins to create predicted or expected values, and then to plot them or to visualize your model. I've taken a subsample of the general social survey. We're looking at two variables. We're going to examine the relationship between education and respondent income. So we'll regress income on education. We're, uh, I also have restricted this to the year 2018, and I've only taken cases that have valid values on both variables. My regression model is very easy to estimate, and if you look at line 7 in the uh, program, which I'll highlight here, and we'll just run that one line, we'll get our regression estimates. I don't want to spend a huge amount of time um, talking about the relationship, but you can see that the R squared for the model is almost 0.1, so about 10% of the variance in income is explained by education. You can also see that for each difference of one year of education, we see a difference, an average difference in income of um, about $3,500. And I'm reading that right off the, uh, the, the sheet there um, where the coefficient is. We can see that the coefficient is statistically significant with a t-value of 11.94, so we'd reject the null hypothesis of no difference. Now once we've estimated this model, you might want to calculate or estimate a predicted value. For example, what would the prediction for income be for people who have 12 years of education? You've probably seen me in class use the command window and just to do little math problems. For instance, if I wanted to calculate something like what is 2 plus 2, I can just enter that and use Stata as a big calculator. So I've gone ahead and in, the, in my um, do file, line 8 uses that display command and it picks the numbers, the coefficients, both the uh, intercept or the constant and the slope coefficient right off the output and just plugs them into a little model where we can estimate the average or expected income for people with 12 years of education. And we can see that that value is $17,137. Now we might want to um, calculate predicted values for everybody in the data set and in line 11 we use this command called predict and the way we use the command is predict and the name of a new variable, so I'll call this y hat, comma, and then what kind of uh, statistic we want to calculate. Here we're going to calculate xb, which really stands for the predicted values. Now when I run this, you want to take a quick look up in the variables window above, and you'll see that we've created a new variable, which is all, all Stata has done is gone to the first respondent in the data set, taken their educational value, and plugged it into that model that we have, and then it does it for everybody in the data set. And in fact, if I summarize this information, you can see that the expected that the average here is 17,137, which is very close, uh, nearly matches up with what we got when I just did this by hand for uh, people with 12 years of education. Now, some of these calculations will be off by just a hair because. Um, of rounding error. Stata really uses as much precision as it can and I'm only using some of the numbers that are on the output but you can see that they're very close. Now there's actually an easier way to do this and, it, and you have to use it right after you use the regression command. So I think of these as go, working in tandem. You estimate a model, that's your re, using the regression command, and then you use the margins command to look at any predicted values that you're interested in. So for example, let me go ahead and rerun the model. I'm going to go back to line 7 to make certain that's the first thing that's kind of we've done. And then I'm going to come down to line 15 and just use this margins command and have Stata figure out the expected or predicted value for people with 12 years of education. And again, you see it's you know $17,137. Now here's how the command works. And it, it's there's more complication to it. We'll come back to some of the complications later. But you just use the margins command. And then if you have a continuous independent variable, you need to put in an option, the at option. So we'll do comma and then at. And then in parentheses, we'll just take the name of our uh, independent variable, EDUC, and set it equal to 12. 
that'll force Stata to take that number 12 and put it into the regression model that we just estimated and it comes up with um, this particular statistic. And if that's all there was uh, in, in this, um, it probably, you know, we could just use a calculator, really, it's not that impressive. But we're not limited to just putting in one value for education. We can put in as many values as we want. So here's an example where I'm going to plug in the values of 12, 14, and 16. And I picked those values by looking at the distribution of education, looking at the summary statistics, and those represent the first, second, and third quartiles, respectively. So they're numbers that I picked based on the distribution. And look what happens when we go ahead and estimate that model. So now we can see, um, this is a little strange, I, I think it's a little strange, but uh, you'll notice that the, the column is labeled 1, 2, and 3, and that corresponds to 12, 14, and 16. I think it would, be, would have been better if Stata would have plugged in the actual values to 12, 14, and 16, but they've chosen to use these numbers um, for some reason. So where we see the, the row labeled 1, that's the expected value or the predicted income for people with 12 years of education, $17,137. The row labeled 2 is the expected value or predicted value for people who have 14 years of education, that is, they're at the median, and that's $24,224. And then finally, the, label, uh, the row labeled 3 is for people who have 16 years of education, and you can see that their average predicted income is $31,312, a rounding up. Um, so it's a very nice way to kind of quickly get a handle on what the different predicted values would be for different uh, groups of people. And of course, while I've picked the quartiles, you could pick any values that were theoretically meaningful to you. And again, if this is all we did with margins, um, it's pretty good, but it, we can do better than that. And now take a look at line 17. So in that area where we can plug in those individual values, so in line 15 I use 12, in line 16 I use 12, 14, and 16, I can put in really as many values as I want. And I'm using kind of a Stata syntax here that says start at 8, increase or increment by 1, and stop at 20. So what this is going to do is create all these margins or the predicted values. First, for the value of 8 for year, 8 years of education. Then it's going to increase by 1, so it'll be 9 years of education. Then it'll increase by 1 from there, it'll be 10 years of education. And it will do that until we get up to the value of 20. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So again, the rows are numbered 1 through 13. And if I scroll up on the screen a little bit, you can see that there's this legend up here which says, well, 1 is equal to 8 years, 2 is equal to 9 years, and so forth. So you just have to keep those in mind. And here are all the predicted values. Now, I think with some experience, you can look at these numbers and you can make some sense out of them. But it really is easier if you could have a, a visualization or a graphic of this relationship. But when I look at this very quickly, I can see for the value of eight years of education, <clears throat> the predicted value of income is um, slightly less than $3,000. For somebody with nine years of education, it increases to uh, $6,500 and so forth. And by the time we get to somebody with um, 20 years of education, row 13, uh, you can see that the number is 45,486. So there seems to be a very clear trend that as number of years of education increases, average income increases as well. So it would be nice if we could somehow put these into a graph. Stata has this command called margins plot, which will use exactly these numbers. And it'll plot education along the x-axis, and it'll plot the expected value or the income along the y-axis, and give us a nice picture of these data. And that's what I'm going to do in line 20. And there's a couple of options that I use pretty typically, um, so let me explain them very shortly. So margins plot is the main command, and if you don't enter any uh, options, it'll it'll often produce a fairly nice looking plot. But 
I, I don't like the um, confidence intervals that Stata produces here, so I'm going to recast this graph as a line graph, not a scatter plot, and then I'm going to use the no CI option to get rid of the confidence interval. So it's going to make kind of a clean graph. And then I'm going to set my scheme equal to a monochrome scheme, which I think looks pretty nice and doesn't uh, distract with colors. Of course, if I'm going to make a final presentation, a final visualization for something like a poster, I would go back and make a color graph and I would uh, match the colors, uh, make, you know, maybe use complementary colors in my graph to the colors that exist in my poster. Let's go ahead and see what Stata does with this command. And there's our graph, and we're very clearly showing that we begin at 8, increment to 9, to 10, to 11, and we see the clear trend that greater years of education is associated with, is statistically significantly associated with greater average income. Um, this is a great command, and just to summarize, when I kind of do all my regression models, number one, I estimate the model using the regress command. Number two, I estimate some predicted values and the changes from uh, problem to problem, how, what numbers I plug in there. And number three, I visualize the model. And I will tell you that when people look at that big table of numbers, they often find it very hard to interpret them. But when they see the graphic, they're usually pretty easily able to make some conclusion about what's going on with the, uh, the regression model. I hope this helps. And uh, we'll see everybody in class.